Hi, I'm Dan Resnicek from Pacific Northwest Urology, and today I'm going to be talking about erectile dysfunction treatments after you've failed medical therapy. So, once we start with oral medications such as Viagra, Levitra, Cialis, Stendra, and Staxin, once those medications fail, we often have men move on to other treatments. Things such as a vacuum erect device or intracavernosal or intraurethral medications in order to give you an erection. If those aren't working well for you or if those are painful or uncomfortable, oftentimes we move on to uh, another procedure called a penile prosthesis. What is a penile prosthesis? A penile prosthesis, as it sounds, is a prosthetic device placed inside the penis to mimic an artificial erection. Or, excuse me, to mimic an erection. A penile prosthesis is actually the first treatment uh, for erectile dysfunction. In the early 1970s, uh, the first penile prosthesis came out in the market, which was a three-piece inflatable penile prosthetic. It consisted of a, a reservoir, a pump, and two cylinders which were placed inside the penis. Um, over the years, this device has uh, transformed and uh, been updated significantly uh, since that time period, and you can see the two leading models here uh, today, um, the AMS and the coloplast prosthesis. For a long time, a penile prosthesis was the only treatment for erectile dysfunction uh, until the 1980s uh, when a man by the name of Giles Brindley um, and several others uh, came up with intracavernosal injections. These injections cause direct vasodilation to the arteries in the penis to give an erection. Dr. Brindley was quite infamous uh, for giving his presentation and injecting himself on stage for his first talk. After these medications were approved by the FDA in the early 1990s, oral medications were then approved, uh, the first being Viagra in 1998 for the treatment of erectile dysfunction. Once these medications came out, we thought this would transform the world of erectile dysfunction, and largely it has. Although uh, it is effective for a large percentage of men, uh, about 40 to 50% of men are not able to get a good erection with Viagra and have to move on to other therapies. And that's why we're here to talk today about penile prosthetic devices. So, how do these work? So, there are two cylinders. Um, these are inflatable and deflatable. Uh, so, what they do is they mimic a normal erection. The two cylinders go inside the penis. There's a pump that sits inside the scrotum and a reservoir. This device is totally concealed and totally within uh, the body of a man. So no one knows that he has this device. Um, and it mimics a normal erection. When you want it to deflate, it's flaccid and it bends and it sits inside your penis in a soft state. Um, I can get this more flaccid than this, uh, but this is just kind of a, a a demonstration that it can sit inside the penis and no one knows that you have it. Um, and then when you want to have an erection, you sit here and pump. This pump, again, inside the scrotum, next to the testicles, um, and it's easy to find. You simply pump and inflate, and you go from a soft penis to a very hard penis very quickly. The nice part about this is unlike oral medications or injections, you, don't, you can't ever forget this, it's always with you. And it's spontaneous. You don't have to go to the refrigerator, find your injectable medications, load your syringes. Um, it's always there with you. Another benefit of the prosthesis is it's uh, erect as long as you want. You simply inflate till you're satisfied with how firm your erection is, and you're good to go. It has no effect on orgasm or ejaculation and no effect on sensation. So whenever you're done, you simply deflate the device and you're back to your normal self again. The procedure to place one of these is an outpatient procedure. Um, you go home the same day of surgery, um, and it generally takes about four weeks before you can activate or use the device, uh, four weeks of healing. Uh, the procedure is generally performed under a general anesthetic, but sometimes can be performed under a spinal anesthetic. It's usually an outpatient procedure. You come in, get the procedure and go home the same day. It can even be done in an ambulatory surgery center like we have here in our building. Uh, the procedure itself generally takes under an hour uh, to perform. So how does the procedure performed? Through a small incision, um, this entire device is placed. Generally one incision, 
Um, sometimes some surgeons will occasionally do a second incision to place the reservoir, um, but the vast majority of surgeons just use one incision most of the time. Um, there's a small incision made into the corporal cavernosum, the erectile tissues, to place these cylinders. And that tissue, that tissue, the corporal cavernosal tissue, is not removed. Uh, this device is just placed inside that space. Next, the reservoir is placed in the space of retzius, or the space next to the bladder, generally placed up through the inguinal canal and into the groin. Um, again, I, like I said before, sometimes there is a second incision made uh, in the lower abdomen to place this. Um, and then last, the, the pump is placed within the scrotum. Again, all these devices are inside the body. Uh, no one knows that you have it. Uh, all the, the incisions are generally very small. And again, if you're doing it through a penile scrotal approach, or an infrapubic approach, both those areas are covered with hair, so no one's going to be able to tell. After the procedure, after the procedure, you generally go home the same day. Uh, some surgeons like to leave a catheter. Other surgeons like to leave a small drain, uh, generally for a day or two. Once the procedure has been performed, generally we wait a period of four weeks to allow the tissues to heal, allow the swelling to go down, um, and then uh, come back in the office and do an exam. Uh, if everything goes well, then we then show you how to use the device and you're good to go. What are some contraindications to the procedure? Um, an absolute contraindication to the procedure is an infection. Uh, if you have a skin or uh, urinary tract infection, uh, we can't do the procedure because you don't want the device infected. Uh, this is a prosthetic device and can get infected. The rates are quite low, 1 to 2%. But if an infection does happen, the device needs to be removed. Um, sometimes we replace it with a uh, semi-rigid or inflatable device at that same time, a salvage procedure. Um, but other times we have to remove the device and come back at a later date to place one. And that leaves you without the ability to have an erection for some time. So it is a serious event when it does happen, and we try to minimize it as much as possible. In any surgical procedure, uh, surrounding tissues are, uh, may be injured, uh, such as the urethra um, or the testicles. Um, there can also be a vascular injury, uh, which is quite rare, or a hernia that can be formed afterwards. Um, the bladder may be injured during placement of the reservoir, but again, uh, these are quite rare in high volume centers. What is the level of pain after the procedure? Well, the level of pain varies a lot from person to person, uh, but generally uh, pain is very well controlled with uh, oral um, pain medication, generally for uh, four to seven days after the procedure. Will there be a pain with the erection when using this device at a later date? Uh, no. Most men say that there is no pain with it. If there is pain, that might be an indication that something is going wrong. Um, although the first you know, dozen times or so that you use it, it may be a bit sore to use. After that, it's no different than a normal erection. Will there be any change to sensation? There is no change to sensation whatsoever. Uh, this has uh, no impact on sensation no impact on orgasm, and no impact on ejaculation. Is this covered by insurance companies? Uh, most insurance companies do cover this. You have to check with your individual insurance plans and your provider uh, to look into that further. Um, Medicare does cover this as well. So unlike, unlike oral medications, unlike injections, unlike a vacuum erect device, the prosthesis is covered by Medicare. Uh, thank you for watching our video with us today. I hope you appreciated it. Uh, if you liked it, uh, please subscribe to our website. 